Glancing at the crotch between the half-open doors to the bedroom of his future wife, the king went inside. Maria immediately got to her feet, her cheeks flushed with a bright blush. There were only eight days left until the wedding day. Mary, trying to hide her feelings, sank into a deep bow before the king. He came closer, smiling, and kept his gaze on her face. The signs of the girl were expressive, although her features looked a little serious. However, her large eyes, wide open and nave, wavy brown hair gave her charm. Pulling Maria closer to him, the king kissed her and took a step away. Then he bowed to the ladies in the room and invited his future wife closer to the fireplace. Madam, you are even more beautiful than in the portrait. At first sight, I felt attracted to you, and I'm looking forward to our wedding day. Maria, who had a poor command of French, uttered an uncertain greeting, expressing joy at the meeting. However, Henry did not even let her finish the sentence, immediately inviting the Duchess of Nemours and asking her to translate her words for Mary. I was in a hurry to be near you, and therefore arrived in advance. The furniture for my room has not been delivered yet, so I would like to spend this night on your bed. Maria, listening attentively to the translation of the Duchess, felt the color rush to her cheeks and quietly said, That's the way to do it, Your Majesty. On April 26, 1575, Maria de' Medici was born. She was the sixth child in the family of the Grand Duke of Tuscany. At the age of two, she lost her mother, and soon her father remarried. The girl's childhood was spent far from the court, and it never occurred to her that her fate could be connected with the royal dignity of France. Considering that many of her siblings died early, with the exception of Sister Eleanor, Maria became an attractive wife for many suitors. Her considerable inheritance attracted the attention of applicants from all over the world. Nevertheless, they were in no hurry to arrange a marriage for her, preferring to wait for the best candidate to appear. And finally, King Henry IV of France showed interest in Marie de' Medici. On October 5, 1600, a proxy marriage took place, where the king was represented by Roger de Bellegarde. However, the real meeting with Henry was still ahead. On December 3, Mary arrived in Lannes, where she began to await the arrival of the king. Their wedding was scheduled for December 17, and before this event, the Medici was placed in the palace of the Bishop of Lyon. By the evening of December 9, Maria was informed of the arrival of the king, and she felt a strong excitement. While she was having dinner in the main hall, her appetite disappeared. Getting up from the table, the girl, accompanied by her court ladies, went to her rooms. Henry also went there, striking his bride with his desire to spend the night with her before the wedding. Maria hesitantly objected that there had not yet been a marriage blessing from the legate, but Henry cheerfully remarked that their marriage had already been consecrated in Florence, which means that it had already entered into legal force. The girl could not find an answer to this remark. The king took Maria to dinner, and after a few glasses of wine and a light snack, they returned to her room. The next morning, in a conversation with his confessor, Henry joyfully remarked that he had discovered special virtues in his wife. Maria was also pleased. Henry was not as old as she had feared, and his vivacity and enthusiasm aroused admiration that any young man would envy. On December 17, 1600, in the Cathedral of Street John the Baptist, the smartly dressed king stood next to Mary and smiled happily. He hoped that the heart of his future son was already beating in her womb. Nine months later, the future king of France, Louis XIII, was born. At the beginning of their life together after the wedding, Henry enjoyed close communication with his wife, but quickly came to the conclusion that her intelligence is not sufficiently developed. Besides, the king did not like the character of Mary. The saying devils are found in a quiet pool is exactly right for her. Outwardly, she seemed calm and inconspicuous, but inside she had a short temper, and she liked to make scandals. This was facilitated by her Italian entourage, which also irritated the king. On January 20, 1601, Henry announced to his wife that he urgently needed to go to Paris, while she and her courtiers should follow, but without haste. This caution was due to the possibility of the queen's pregnancy. After leaving his wife, Henry went not to Paris, but to Vernuil, where his passionate favorite, the Marquise Henrietta, was waiting for him. He spent several days in her arms and successfully became the father of her child, 
This illegitimate child was born a couple of weeks later than the future heir to the throne, the Dauphin.